Thanks very much for staying with us. Before we take you to the Republican response from Congressman Paul Ryan of Wisconsin, we want to get some immediate reaction to the president's speech, what he had to say. I want to bring back our guests, our Washington executive editor, Al Hunt, former Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle, former Senator John Sununu. Joining us now, economist Kevin Hassett, the director of the Economic Policy, Insti Economic Policy Studies at the American Enterprise Institute and a Bloomberg columnist. And from Berkeley, California, Christina Romer, the former chair of the President's Council of Economic Advisors, now a Bloomberg contributing editor and a professor of economics at Cal Berkeley. Thanks to all of you for joining us. And Al, I'm going to go to you first. You've seen a lot of these before. Your take on this one. It was good, very good. Uh, it was long, but it, it was devoid of the laundry list that has marked some previous speeches. It was the right tone. Uh, I thought he, uh, he, he, was, he hit a lot of high notes, uh, and it was great tonight. We'll see what it brings tomorrow. Not a lot of specifics. We didn't get the laundry list, Senator Daschle. Is that the right approach at this particular moment in time? There are going to be some people suggesting, where's the beef here? Peter, I think the most important thing he could do tonight is set the right tone and to create the kind of environment for real bipartisanship. I actually give the Congress high marks tonight because of their department, the kind of uh, civility they showed, the, this new notion that you can actually sit together. I think it was a good thing. I think the reaction that you saw tonight, largely bipartisan, standing ovation, and the kind of response the president got was the right tone. Senator Sununu, a Republican perspective on that? Well, I think the economic themes were put together well. Innovation, education, rebuild, and, and deal with the national debt. Two areas, though, that I think he'll, he'll get some pushback from Republicans in particular. One is on the level of spending. A freeze isn't a bad idea, but we're freezing at extraordinarily high levels. And Republicans are going to want to see more effort made to reduce the overall level of spending. And second is the long-term debt. The president didn't offer specifics on entitlement reform, Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, the things that need to be addressed if we're really going to do something about our long-term debt and deficit. So Republicans, and I think Paul Ryan in, in his, uh, his own address, are going to come back pretty firmly on those issues. Kevin Hass, I'll give you the next uh, crack at this. You and I were talking during the speech, uh, short on some specifics. You mentioned in particular the corporate tax uh, initiative, his openness to it. He's expressed openness before, but no specific proposal. Right, that's right. This is, by my count, the fourth time that in a big venue the president has said we need to cut the corporate rate, but he still has yet to have a proposal. But I think the headline for me looking at the speech is that Al earlier said that he doesn't think there have been very many memorable moments in State of the Union addresses, and Al's seen almost all of them, I guess. Uh, is, <laughs> so that, that means something. But, but i got to say that I think this was an unusually memorable one precisely because what Mr. Daschle said, that the fact is that there was uh, some kind of collegiality that we haven't seen on, on both parts. And I, it gives me a lot of hope for legislation this year. All right, Christina Romer in California, you didn't have the opportunity to directly write this one as you did last time around, but what is your take on this speech? Is this the kind of State of the Union address you would have suggested the president deliver at this time if you were still at the White House? Uh, it certainly had some of the themes I thought were incredibly important. And, you know, I think on the deficit, there was meat there. And I think one of the things that was so important is to say the answer isn't just to, to cut non-defense discretionary in 2011, to point out that it's a long-run problem and that everything has to be on the table. And I think that was pretty brave to say Medicare, Social Security, even revenues had to be on the table. So I thought that was important. I also was encouraged by the competitiveness theme. I was a little nervous it was going to be us versus them. But really what it was was what can we do to make America productive? And I think that is an incredibly important message, and I think he did it very, very well. Uh, Dr. Romer, I know that you've written even in the New York Times recently about the need for, for this administration to talk about that long-term fiscal picture. There will be some, you know it, and we're going to hear from Republicans, probably Paul Ryan in just a few moments' time, who will say the president needs to come forward in this budget with more specific cuts in areas like entitlements, that sort of thing, as Senator Sununu suggested. Is it time for this president to, to come forward with some of those specifics? I think it is. I think he, he has to grab hold of this issue or he's going to be dragged to it. And I think to say, you know, here's a sensible plan that focuses not on this year, but on the plan, because it's the budget deficit's a long run plan. We need to, to pass in 2011 a long run uh, policy for dealing with it. I think that's exactly what he has to do to get the space to do the other things he wants to do. He talked very movingly about innovation and education and infrastructure. How do you get any of the funds you need to do that? You need to make sure you're dealing with the long-run deficit if we're going to be able to, to put some more money into to education or infrastructure. 
Any of you around this table think that uh, his sales pitch for investment in infrastructure, uh, education, those are going to resonate with Republicans? Isn't that code, Al, for more spending? And a lot of these Republicans are going to stand in the way even though they clap tonight? Oh, in some cases uh, they will. But in some cases, I think in education and some technology, John could speak to it better than I can. I think they will find some common ground. Look, I'm not as optimistic as Christina or Kevin on things happening. Uh, you know, let's hope I'm wrong. But I think the one thing he did, and I have not seen every State of the Union address, but, but I was so impressed with reading Roosevelt and watching Ronald Reagan. They captured the can-do American spirit. It was the high. That's what he did tonight. I thought he did that very effectively, apart from the particulars. This was an optimistic speech, and I think that was really what the American people are looking for. They've got to believe we can do it. They've got to believe that we can draw the best from ourselves and show the strength and the resolve of the resiliency and the innovation uh, to go to the next chapter. The Sputnik moment, I think, is really what the president tried to hit tonight. I think he hit it well. If there's a weakness on some of the, the spending proposals is that they were a little bit repetitive, a little bit recycled. The clean energy, uh, hiring teachers, um, uh, the tax credit for, uh, for tuition. Uh, these are all things that he's talked about before. And I think that's, that's going to ring a little bit hollow as we go to tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And people are going to be coming back saying, you know, what can really be done to address the, the spending and the deficit? And that's largely, not only, but largely what the elections were about. Kevin, from an economic perspective, the ideas the president put on the table today, even though some of them may be uh, things he's offered in the past, would they make a difference for an economy still facing 9.4% unemployment? Look, he's talking about winning the future because we're losing the present. We're losing the present because we keep putting off the tough decisions. And we're going to stop putting off the, the tough decisions when the president comes out and leads on these issues. And I think there were just too many generalities to have a, a huge amount of optimism that we're going to, say, go after entitlements and do the kind of things that Christie talked about that we need to do to get the House in order. These are I actually don't think this is a time to get too far into the weeds. There's going to be time for that. That's the budget, that. right? That's really it. I think, I think you, you know, he's got to come back, and I think we probably all agree that uh, the next step is really the tough one. It's, he set the tone tonight. He created the environment for the possibility for real bipartisanship and common ground. But the next step is to show the leadership to point how we actually accomplish the many good things he talked about tonight. I, I think that's true, and, and I think he's been given an opening, an opening on substance with the work of the Bipartisan Deficit Commission. They came back with a lot of substance, and he can embrace some of that, present some of that in, in his own way, his, his own form. He's also been given an opening on process, and that was the process that they used to get to a tax agreement. Sort of everyone knew that the issue of taxes had to be dealt with, and, and it may have seemed simple after the fact, but they came up with a mechanism and a negotiating framework to do it. Led the leadership on the part of uh, Tim Geithner and the Secretary of Treasury, uh, participation by the leadership, Republican leadership in the House and the Senate. They got the right people in the room, and what what emerged wasn't just an agreement on the uh, the Bush tax cuts, but a number of other pieces on capital gains and estates as well. And I think you've, you've got to put the process together with the substance, and he's got the opportunity John, to do right it. As right as you are, the tax thing was so easy because it was giving away money. It's a lot easier to give away money than it is to do some of, make some of the hard choices they have but, to make this year. But politically, the sides were dug in pretty deep on the tax issue, in part because it had been allowed to fester for so long. And, uh, and in, in some ways, again, there's an opportunity to put together a similar coalition, a similar process for negotiating a broader agreement on, say, entitlements. And maybe the opportunity is to do it before we have too much divisive debate over the next three or six or nine months. Let me ask uh, Dr. Romer about the, the spending fight to come in the short term here, because the president talked about this five-year freeze, saving as much as $400 billion over 10 years. But we've got Republicans in the House, even today, acting to move on non-security discretionary spending, actually cutting non-security discretionary spending. What would that do to the economy right now? You've made the case that uh, uh, its austerity right now would be a threat to the economy. Do you still believe that? I absolutely do. I think that is part of the reason why the president needs to, to lead on this issue, precisely because I think Republicans have tried to reduce the deficit to what do we do about non-defense discretionary spending in 2011. And I think that is not only a sort of a sideshow, I think it could be counterproductive, precisely because uh, if you cut spending now, that is going to tend to hurt the economy. You know, one of the things that the Bipartisan Deficit Commission said is most of the hard changes don't start in 2011. 
let's pass the plan now, but let's phase them in when the economy uh, is healthier. And I think that's absolutely true. I think one point I'd like to come back, you asked what, what would actually make a difference on jobs. I think the actions that were taken in the lame duck, the, the bipartisan actions on extending unemployment insurance, the payroll tax cut, those are important sort of short-run aggregate demand problem, you know, solutions. We still have an aggregate demand problem. What the president was then talking about tonight was moving more to how do we have sustained higher growth, and that's where all of these productivity enhancements that he's been talking about become so important.